and welcome to Creative Magic Club. Together, we'll discover inspirational stories of creative entrepreneurs living out their dreams, doing the work they are most passionate about, and building wealth in magical and fun ways. While building a six-figure income as a writer and coach, helping other women to launch their dream businesses, I've connected with so many incredible people and seen it proven again and again that you can thrive financially doing whatever it is you are passionate about. I'm here to share life-changing strategies for mindset, making money, and reaching more people with your work in a business and life filled with creativity, freedom, and fun. Welcome. I'm so excited to introduce my special guest today. We have with us Juliana Barabati. She is a dynamic podcast strategist, consultant, and owner of a top boutique podcast production agency. Her specialties include marketing, SEO, copywriting, and monetization, all of which allow her to help entrepreneurs elevate their voices and spread their inspiring messages. Juliana's passion goes beyond business. As a born again Christian, she is deeply passionate about the Bible and her faith in Jesus. And she lives in El Salvador with her husband, two homeschooled littles and her ever expanding brood of cats. Hi, Juliana. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So Juliana, I, someone put me on to you. They were like, this woman has had loads of success with helping people reach, um, you know, top rankings with their podcasts. And so obviously I was like, I need to get in on that and like love all of your stuff. And I'm so excited to talk more about podcasts, to dive into podcasting as an audience growth strategy. I know you have kind of like, you're not a big fan of social media because you're all in on the podcasting. So we're definitely gonna dive into that. But before we do, like, tell us your story. How did you get to doing this work? Okay, so a little bit of backstory. In 2018, my husband and I decided that we were gonna start um, an Amazon store. So, you know, we that's how we got started in the online space was with e-commerce. And then our store hit six figures within two years. And then also the pandemic happened in 2020. And because they were home staring at each other, um, I was like, what else can I do? So in 2020, I decided to open up an Etsy shop and the Etsy shop took off. So then I was like, what is the next thing? I was like, well, I'm going to start a podcast and teach uh, women how to do what I did. So I did that and, um, you know, I launched my podcast to an audience of zero. I didn't have an email list. I didn't have a social media following or anything. Um, and then the podcast again took off. So then, you know, I was really going all in in my podcast, but then, uh, and the podcast I launched May of 2020. And then we get to uh, December of 2021 and I'm like, I have said everything there's to say about e-commerce. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And there is like more of me that needs to come out. Like I'm really great at copy and I'm really creative in other things. Like I really feel like I can really balance like the really strategic side with like the creative side. And I needed to like expand. So I started to take inventory of my life and I was like, okay, what else could I do? You know? And I was like, well, you know, I have a successful podcast. I can teach people how to do the same. And I know like the pain points or like, I know very well what podcasters need. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. But, you know, I kind of juggled, I was in the space of like, can I really do this? Can, can I like let go of the Etsy coaching space and go into podcasting? So for a little while, my business was growing like speaking style it was just like word of mouth and it was like growing and growing and growing and I was having a hard time like with the growth and I was like listen I'm just gonna go all in with the podcast and like shut down the Etsy side because you know imposter syndrome right like I was trying to balance both I was like in, in some world like th this two match and I can marry the two uh, but anyway March of 2022 I go all in with the podcast agency and it just took off and then to be able to turn around and to do the same for my clients has just been so amazing to see because all of my clients they have top ranking podcasts and to be able to say that I'm like okay it's time it's time for me to own this and and this is it this is how it started you know it was just I didn't always know this is what I wanted I'm not a speaker by any means it just kind of like it was an evolution you know 
Yeah, I love that. Just following the breadcrumbs, letting it all unfold. It's not like you were a kid being like, I want to be a podcast coach. <laughs> no, or like even a business owner, you know, like yeah. I wanted to be like a housewife. Like I wanted to be like a stay-at-home mom when I was like younger, you know, before I knew the reality of like raising littles and all that. Like I, I this was not for me. It was like not what I wanted. It was not what I pictured, you know? So that's awesome. And I know that, you know, something that you talk about a lot and that you help your clients with is using a podcast as an audience growth strategy and one that doesn't require you to be posting on social media, which I know is, you know, we have complex relationships with social media. So I think this is a perspective that is really um, interesting. And I would love for you to like, tell us a little bit more about that. So it sounds like this kind of picked up through word of mouth off the back of your last business. Um, but yeah, do you have any stories around like how you've helped clients to transition away from social media or just what, you know, what it can do for you to really have, um, you know, like a loyal podcast audience in your business? Yeah, I mean, so my own journey was, you know, I just got really burned out by social media. I had, there was a period in my life that I really wanted to be an influencer and like, you know, take some pictures and floaties and post on Instagram, and make money. And I'm like, I hate Instagram. I hate selfies. Like, I don't, I cannot even take good pictures. Like, what am I thinking? You know, but you know, I was waking up, there was a, a time in my life, I was waking up at four in the morning, I had a two year old and a newborn. And I was like, you know, fo following the formula, like, give five likes, comment a few emojis, and then like, leave a thoughtful comment, like, who does that? Like, I was doing it, you know, and I was just so burned out. And when 2020 rolled around and we were like staring at each other, I'm like, I'm just going to start this podcast. I don't care about social media. That's not going to be my strategy. I just really have always hated social. I have been blocked off social so many times. And like, I am a stalker. I'm not a poster. <laughs> like, why am I getting like banned from Instagram? So in November of 2022, I'm like, I'm done. And I just deleted my account. I haven't, I did not like permanent delete it, but I can get back in if I want to, but you cannot find my, my profile now. And my business like took off. For my clients, some of them still have the love, love and hate relationship with podcasts. So I have to do like a lot of coaching and like, listen, this gets to be easy, make the podcast the main thing. And, you know, it's not for everybody. Like for some people, they do enjoy coming on social and like talking about whatever and having that connection. For me, I get the fulfillment from like email or like my Facebook. I still have my, 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 my Facebook. Um, so, you know, I... I respect my clients and what they want to do, but a lot of them are like, I'm done with social. I've had multiple clients who just got banned. They had like thousands and thousands of followers and like one day they lost it all. So they have been learning through like experience through life. Like I have to rely on the podcast because, you know, I don't want to say it's impossible for you to get canceled on a podcast. I, the only person I know is Alex Jones <laughs> and we know why that happened, you know? Uh, but most people are not getting canceled on a podcast versus on social media. Like there's always something happen happening. Plus the algorithm changes, you know, like you get the hang of it. And then like five minutes later, the algorithm changes. Whereas on a podcast, there is an algorithm, but it's very stable. And this, the changes are very subtle and you can, it, it really does work in your favor. And once you know the foundational pieces of a podcast, that's it. Like you're good. You're set. You have just as much of a chance to rank as the celebrity coach next door, which is amazing. Yeah, I love that. And that was definitely a big part of the appeal for me in starting a podcast. Like I love that every time I log in and I look at my statistics, like those numbers are only going up, you know? Yeah. And the fact that it's evergreen content that people, you know, because of the SEO, people can continue to find it, can continue to benefit from it, which, you know, is true to some level on social media, but it's completely different like you say, with the algorithm. And yeah, I've had one of my accounts just taken away from me, like no customer service. Like, you know, we put our heart and soul into building those communities. So I think it's really smart to make sure that, you know, we're just making those decisions to have ownership of our audience. Um, so I love that we're having that conversation. Do you have any great success stories for anyone who's like thinking about starting a podcast, you know, like, what kind of audience numbers and download numbers do you see in your clients when they really start to, um, you know, be able to sustain an income from their business through their podcast? 
You know, the interesting thing is that it varies. Like I have clients who maybe get 200 downloads per episode and I have clients who get like thousands of downloads per episode and they're both making money with their audiences. Why? Because their message is important because they're not censoring themselves. They're just being themselves, you know, and like really making that connection with the listener. So they get to make money no matter where they are on the spectrum, you know, so and and they're monetizing with their products and their services. So they're not even waiting on advertisers to come in and, and do uh, promos or anything like that. It's all with their services. So mo or not most all of my clients, they are service based providers. So they have something that they're selling, whether it's coaching, a program, some sort of offer. Um, and this is how they monetize their podcast. You know, um, I have one client actually who does not use her podcast to monetize anything, but she uses it to land interviews with like some really amazing people that are like totally household names in the podcast industry. So that's what she uses her podcast for, which again, it's, it's just like the flexibility that a podcast gives you that you can do whatever you want with her podcast, you know, and, and if you are somebody who wants to run ads or anything like that, there's room for you too, you know, so there's not like, you know, this is how we podcast and there's only one way. And that's the beauty about like what I do in my agency is that I can really see my client and their goal and we can work out something that works for them at the end of the day, if they want to do ads for another company, or if they want to monetize with, um, their own programs and services we're here for for it all and for some people they don't don't want to monetize they just want to have the really good amazing conversations which in a way like it's not why you know it's who you know right so like building those those networks and like really having access to people they wouldn't have access otherwise right like it, it just opens up so many opportunities for you you know like this one client that I can think of she even got on TEDx you know so it's just a world of possibilities. Hi loves, I wanted to let you know that I made a special free gift just for you. It's called the cash injection ritual and it's my three-step method that you can use to create extra cash sales starting today. I used to suck at making consistent money and I believed I would never be good at sales because I refuse to do anything that feels out of integrity. Then I discovered the powerful mindset shifts I'm about to share with you, and I implemented this cash injection ritual to double my income three years in a row, making it to six figures in my dream coaching business. Now I'm so effing excited to share this work with you so you can start receiving the money you so, so, so deserve. So click the link in the description or go to withsarahmack.com and you can download the cash injection ritual from the freebies menu at the top of my page. Please remember to share your celebrations with me when the extra sales and cash starts to roll in. Before we get back to the episode, I have something exciting to tell you about. There were a couple of key things that changed everything in my life as an entrepreneur that allowed me to bring in six figures while working half as many hours and having more fun than ever before in my business. It was money mindset work around how I was doing business combined with getting good at sharing strategic sales content online. I know you know that this is your year to start hitting your 10K month income goal and living the life of creative freedom and fulfillment you have been dreaming about. You're ready to be consistently attracting total dream soulmate clients through the creative content you're sharing on social media, and you want to be reaching more people, charging higher rates and working much less. So I'm very excited to invite you to join me in Freedom Club, my mastermind, where you'll receive tailored high-level support to master the skills that will create your dream life and six-figure dream business starting now. With focused weekly trainings and coaching calls to find the clarity on your content that's going to make you the most money, to design a simple, fun launch strategy you'll enjoy following through on, plus daily support and feedback from me in the Voxer chat, you'll find that sweet spot in your business where you're the most confident in your work having the most fun and making the most money. Go to withsaramac.com forward slash freedom club to apply now. Now let's get back to the episode. So what would you say are kind of like the foundational pieces of a really good podcast? Okay, so first, and, and I'm always afraid to say this because people tend to tune out, but it is SEO. But SEO on a podcast is so different than like a website where a website takes you like one year for you to rank on Google. On podcasts, you can like literally rank right away and you can see how things change like very quickly inside of a podcast. 
Um, so, and, and don't be afraid the way that I teach pod, uh, the way that I teach SEO, it's like, nobody else does it the way that I do it. I, I make it super simple. And once you understand like the basics of SEO and you're like, okay, SEO is actually super helpful. It's not like this thing that we made out to be like only geeks understand, like we can all understand SEO and it's actually super simple. Um, obviously consistency, right? So you do have to stay consistent. So whether you're going to do seasons and you're going to show up for the season, or if you're like me, like I show up on my podcast, I've been podcasting for three years nonstop. That works for me, but I'm like super consistent and I have taken breaks, meaning, you know, I have done the crazy thing where I do one episode a day for three days and now it's summer and I'm doing one podcast a week, whereas I usually do two episodes a week, but that consistency is key, you know, and honestly, like saying what you want to say, because if you're not, if you're censoring yourself, if you're not allowing your message to come through, you're not going to connect with people, right? Um, if you're scripting your episodes, it's just going to sound robotic. So I do not let my clients um, script their episodes because it takes you out of the flow. I'm all here for bullet points and having some guidance, but like, let's not script because that's not the point of podcasting, you know? So those really are the foundational pieces of, of the podcast. It, and listen, it's not the editing, right? It's not making sure that you have this perfectly edited show. It is really about you being yourself and showing up, letting yourself be heard and be seen and focusing on that SEO because the SEO is how you grow inside of the podcast app. And the beauty is, you know, I really focus on Apple because Apple is the biggest player. Apple starts to promote you organically you know, just by you using those keywords in the right place, Apple is like, oh, okay, you are in this bucket. And the person who listens to, to this podcast will also enjoy podcasts. I'm going to let them know for you, which is amazing, you know, and which is how my podcast grew. My podcast, I have never done ads for a podcast. I am an organic marketing person through and through. So that is the beauty of that. Yeah, I love that. And I actually want to talk about SEO, for anyone who doesn't know, is search engine optimization, because particularly for my audience, who are super creative, love to like, you know, just self-expression is the name of the game. And sometimes some of this like strategic thinking can feel a little stifling, a little like, you know, lead you to kind of like overthinking or just definitely creates friction. And I just want to share my experience with it because you know, I used to write SEO for clients when I was a copywriter and I didn't like doing it, you know, like trying to fit the keywords in to the, like the descriptions that it was, it, it's hard, right? It's hard to be like analytical or it can be. So I moved away from that super quickly. I, you know, outsourced SEO in my own business because I didn't want to be doing that. And then I joined your program because I was like, let's, you know, let's put some intentionality into my podcast. I've been doing it for two years. You know, I know this is going to help me allow it to reach more people. And, you know, I definitely had some resistance around the SEO and I've talked, you know, I, in my friends, like my friend entrepreneurs, we have resistance around SEO, but I was like, you know what? I know that if just by getting into this process and like really learning it and learning a process, I can then hand that off to other people to do for me, but I just need to go through that process for myself. And I actually kind of had a breakthrough where it was like, I was doing the keywords, you know, like, yeah, there was definitely like, it took me a while to get into it, but once I got into it, it actually started generating the ideas and it kind of sparked a different approach and a different way of creatively thinking about actually about my audience, because it allowed me to think about like, well, what are people searching for? You know, like what are the words in people's heads? What are their curiosities around? What are the common words that people are literally putting into the search engine because they're trying to solve their problems and I think that's just a good mindset to kind of get into that slightly more analytical strategic approach to things um and obviously once you've pulled all of your keywords together then you can come back to them again and again and be creative in the way you're mixing and matching them and yeah and then if you want to outsource you know the descriptions and stuff like that you can totally do that so I just wanted to share that because yeah, I don't know if you get pushback from your clients around like the SEO yes, at all. A thousand percent, especially because they're all creative. So like when we show them the titles, they're like, oh, like they don't like the titles. But here's the thing, no matter how creative you are, how, how, how you know, how in the flow you are, when you go to Google and you search, you know, you know, how to lose weight on keto. That's how you are like typing, for example, right? Like you're not like, you know, how to release... Uh, 
pounds. Like, no, you're like very straightforward with what you need. So no matter who you are on the spectrum, like of creativity, you're very matter of fact when you are searching for something. And this is how we we have to think when we are creating those titles. So I still weave in creativity in the titles that I create. And like, make no mistake, the podcast episode itself is super creative and it's all me. But the titles, I, I have infused ways to be more creative with them. But I'd rather you have a podcast that every title is how to do X, Y, Z, how to do ABC, rather than, you know, blossoming into the next phase because nobody's searching that you know like the, like what does that even mean you know so you have to be careful that your titles are not like too you know lucy like too creative because what you think like you think people are getting it but like people are like i have no idea what do you mean you know so just being super straightforward um in your titles is going to give you so much visibility and you know just know that sometimes they're not the most creative and that's okay but your creativity gets to shine in other areas um Uh, your podcast what do you have to say about like you know obviously this is really important when you're beginning and when you're establishing an audience and you're you know you want all of this strategy to be working for you to bring your content to new people what do you like did will you know if you still had like millions of followers followers would you still be using the strategy or would you like be a little more like open with your seo and keywords honestly i would personally stay in the seo because i don't know like I could have like millions of downloads, right? But like, what about the person who's still searching? She has no idea who I am. I still want to be able to reach her and keep growing my audience because what happens is then you're relying entirely on word of mouth, which is not a bad thing, but I want to be able to like reach, you know, people without having to rely on anything, but you know, the keywords. So I would still keep up with the the keyword game, no matter what. Um, even my clients who do have more reach were like, yeah, like, let's make sure that the titles and like, listen, that's really the only part of your podcast that we really have to be super focused and like keywords are super important in your title. We can have a little bit more flexibility with the show notes, you know, and things like that. But like your title, it is like the number one thing, the number one place where we need to be like super, um, like matter of fact. And like, again, like you can still be creative, but like use keywords be creative but use keywords yeah and I can you know I can attest to that from running my podcast for two years it's like yeah the growth has been happening but it's been happening very slowly and I'm sure if I had implemented this kind of a strategy from the beginning like I'd probably be in a different position but that's okay you know I started with you know it's a process right like building out each of the the skills and the tools like one piece at a time um but yeah if you're thinking about starting a podcast or you're new, like definitely look into the SEO because it's just a tool that can help you get a bump up. So I would love to hear if you have any words of wisdom for people like me who are like super multi-passionate, love to talk about many, many different topics. Um, when it comes to kind of like niching and establishing your brand around, you know, specific, specific topics and keywords. Um, yeah. Is there like a minimum? Is there a maximum? Do you have any words of wisdom on niching and kind of standing out in your brand, in your, um, you know, in your target audience? Yeah. So, you know, I think first of all, when I, when I hear somebody's multi-passionate, usually there's a common thread, right? Like there is a thing that holds like all the pieces together, you know? So really getting introspective here and finding out like, what is the common thread? Because to you, you may think like, oh man, I'm all over the place. But like, if you look deeper, there is a common thread there. And like really focusing on that is really going to help you. You know, another way to look at is like, let's say you do have way too many passions, right? And they don't all fit in. Like you have to like put yourself in like a smaller box. Okay. You can still bring in those pieces of you in your podcast. So for example, I live an non-toxic life and I was living an non-toxic life before non-toxic was cool. Like for years and years. Um, I'm vegan, I'm Christian, I am like all these things. And they don't all have a place in my podcast, but I infuse them in into my episodes. So I'll bring in like, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, how it takes me, I don't know, five hours to find a backpack for my kids, because backpacks, you may not know, but they're, they're super toxic, you know, so it's a way for me to like, um, educate my audience on something that maybe they wouldn't know but I'm still talking about it. I'm not going on and on and on about the backpack. Right. But I'm like talking about, you know, I'm, I'm tying it in with something that I'm teaching in that episode. So it's a way for me to incorporate all the pieces that I am 
into what I'm putting out. Sometimes it doesn't all make it into one episode and it doesn't have to. So giving yourself the flexibility that like not every episode is going to give you like all the aspects of your life. But I think, you know, giving people, uh, letting people have a chance to see these different facets of you um, will fulfill your soul while also helping you grow in your business. You know, so that's how I would see. So taking a look and see, okay, if there is no common thread, then what is the thing that I really want to focus on? And then how can I support that with these other pieces of my life that are super important to me? I love that. That's such a great answer. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of these nuggets of wisdom. There's so much to think about here. And I hope this is really inspiring people to go out there and, you know, do your podcast and get it out there to more people. Cause there's also not that many women podcasters and it's, you know, it's really like, a new um, channel relatively compared to other types of um, media. So I'm excited about podcasting. You're amazing. Everyone should definitely come and check out your work. Can you please tell us like, what are you up to? Where can people find you um, if they want to know more? Yeah. So my podcast is called Organic Marketing Simplified and something really cool. I just got certified in subconscious marketing. So I'm going to be infusing that into the podcast and things that I do. So I am like the only one, the only podcast strategist who's also certified in subconscious marketing. So I'm super excited to see like, what is the next evolution of myself and how I'm going to infuse it all together because I have like way too many ideas right now. So yes, my podcast again is Organic Marketing Simplified. I am not on social media, but I am on Facebook and you can totally friend request me. And I love seeing pictures of your kids, your dogs, your vacations, your food. So let's connect. And it's just my name, Juliana Barbati, and I'll give you that so you can put it in the show notes. And yeah, come connect with me. Amazing. Thank you so much, Juliana. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. Please share this with someone you know would benefit and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.